But the Lord keeps bringing me, taking me back to this. And it's Hebrews 12. Hebrews 12 is the, the, the chapter that comes on the heels of the great heroes of faith. Chapter 11. Those who persevered through hard times, delays, opposition, but maintained faith. And God gave us a list of, a partial list in Hebrews 11. So these, these people pleased me with their faith. And then he gets to the 12th chapter and he, he starts saying, look, now you, you have to do this. You have to lay aside the sins and the weights, things that can slow you down so that you can run the race effectively. Because well, this is me reading into it, but this is what I believe he's saying. You can be one of those people. See, if you, if you do this, he's saying, if you get rid of the weights and run the way you should, you can be in the hall of faith. And then he starts talking about the discipline of the father. That's encouraging, isn't it? He's saying, look, the father loves you. He's not saying he's angry. He's not saying he's going to beat you up. He's saying he's a good dad. And he's going to shape you for life, for running, for victory. He's, he's not going to wear you down and destroy you. He's going to knock off and break off of you the things that keep you from running the race effectively because he's a good dad and it's a wonderful passage that really shares with right prospect perspective the the heart of the father when it comes to disciplining us it's training And then he talks about the shaking that's coming to the earth. And he, he talks about a, an ultimate shaking that will come. But I think most theologians would agree that, wow, this does point to a final shaking, the principles are to be applied to every season. Just as the discipline is and the running of the race. So throughout history, there are shakings. And he shakes down what can be shaken because it's not the pure kingdom of God until what is left standing is the kingdom of God. And so that is to be applied to our lives. He wants, when I'm in a difficult situation, a shaking, he wants, he wants me to allow that to, to show me things in my life that aren't of God. They're not strong. They're, they're not eternal. They're not important. So those things can be shaken off of me so that when he's finished, I'm just a kingdom son motivated by kingdom principles and kingdom ideals and kingdom goals and my heart is to, is to run for the pleasure of the Father. Does that make sense? So that's the passage. And at the end of the shaking, verse 25, he says, don't Ask to be excused from it. It's just coming. You're going to have to go through it. And he compares it to the shaking at Sinai. But I want to get to verse 28. This is the promise I want to leave you with. This is an amazing verse that, to summarize all of what I just said. The faith walk the dis difficult times 
the shakings. And by the way, that shaking, it, it must be applied to America right now. He is allowing us to be shaken. If not for his grace and mercy and purposes, we would not survive. America would not survive were it not for the mercy and outpouring of Holy Spirit that's coming. We're too far gone. But when he gets to the end of all of this, he says, therefore, therefore, since we receive a kingdom that can't be shaken, now, I'm going to give you some literal translations of this verse. What it says in Greek there is not that we have received a kingdom that can't be shaken, but that we are receiving a kingdom. That we're in the process. God is doing something in our generation and in our lives to establish his kingdom mountain in our lives. So he says, <clears throat> don't be alarmed by all the shaking that's going on. You must understand that I have called you to a kingdom and you are receiving through all of this a kingdom that can't be shaken. I'm just building the kingdom in America. I'm building the kingdom in your life. I'm building the kingdom in your family. If you get on board with me, you're going to run the race effectively and make it to the hall of faith because you're part of a kingdom that can't be shaken. And I'm building that kingdom in you.